Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new studies in regards to the Higgs boson. And specifically we're going to focus on some of the new studies that tackle the idea of the end of the universe and the end of the universe that could technically happen any moment. But I guess more specifically, we're going to discuss an extremely recent study that links this idea with something else. It links it with primordial black holes, using all of this as evidence that primordial black holes might not actually exist. Ok, so I know there's a lot to dissect here, and so I guess let's just start with baby steps. Let's start with the Higgs boson and what exactly this particular phenomenon was supposed to explain. And so Higgs boson, even though it's technically named after Peter Higgs, which is by the way it's an official name, was also explored by these five scientists. Dr. Kibble, Goralnik, Hagen, Englert and Braut. And so all six of them worked on this concept back in 1964, with Peter Higgs right here being the main author. And the main point for their initial study in theoretical physics was to basically understand how certain particles can actually gain mass at much lower energies, something that back then for physicists was extremely difficult to explain. And so eventually they explained this by proposing a new particle that obviously was not called Higgs particle back then, that would exist in its own field with all of these particles interacting with this field which would cause them to acquire mass. And so in this case this field can actually be imagined as a kind of a body of water, with pretty much everything in the universe being inside of it. And so as some particles travel through this water, they essentially experience a kind of a drag that then gives them mass. Now obviously this is just a symbolical representation, but in a nutshell this is how all of this was explained. And various individual excitations or oscillations inside of this field could occasionally produce particles, and it's actually these particles that we refer to as Higgs boson. Particles that are very unstable that decay into other particles pretty much immediately. And then back in 2012 the existence of this particle was officially confirmed and in 2030 Dr. Higgs was awarded a Nobel Prize. But intriguingly, these propositions about the Higgs field do actually have some really important implications for the entire universe. Specifically because all of these original propositions also mention that the field itself is not actually perfectly stable. In some sense it's known as metastable. It could maybe experience a kind of a transition or a phase shift into something else something that's even more stable. And some of the propositions for the famous inflation theory, or basically the idea that the universe expanded extremely quickly and became extremely large in the first few moments of the existence of the universe, has been explained as a potential phase shift of the earlier version of the Higgs field. Now this is obviously just a hypothesis, but mathematically it does actually kind of make sense. And so basically, as soon as the universe began, right after the Big Bang, the initial Higgs field might have been a lot more different and a lot more unstable and potentially contained more energy. And then something happened and it went through a kind of a transition stage, dramatically expanding the entire universe and acquiring a new energy level. But that's not where the story ends, because turns out that a lot of modern calculations, especially calculations of the Higgs boson mass, suggest that it seems to be very close to the boundary for stability but is not stable yet. Now here we actually don't have the super precise measurement of its mass yet, but previous calculations do actually imply that it can even go lower. In other words, the entire Higgs field might go through another phase transition, thus changing the universe once again. And in that case, it's going to end up creating completely new physics. And so basically, life as we know it, or really everything as we know it, is just going to disappear. All of the fundamental forces, all of the particles, all of the structures are just going to cease to exist, eventually being replaced by something entirely different. And so in theoretical physics, there's always been the suggestion that technically our universe is still in that metastable state or in a kind of a false vacuum. The state that can technically disappear pretty much at any moment, with the entire field suddenly dropping in energy and instantly changing the laws of physics to something we cannot imagine. And so in some sense you can actually kind of visualize this as a phase transition we usually observe in water. So for example in the beginning the universe could have been ice, then suddenly became water, which I guess it still is today, and then at some point it's going to become vapor. But since we don't know the exact masses of various particles, we don't really know exactly when this would happen. 
Although based on quantum mechanics, scientists believe that the probability is extremely low, so it might happen, but definitely not for at least a few billion years, possibly much, much, much longer. But the thing is they believe that when this transition happens, just like water transitioning into vapor, it might start forming very small instabilities, or for the lack of better words, tiny bubbles, with extremely different physics inside of those bubbles. So kind of like boiling water. Before it evaporates, we see a lot of bubbles, with these bubbles obviously containing different type of water inside. And so any kind of a phase transition inside the Higgs field would possibly result in these low energy bubbles. And inside of this bubble, everything from the mass of electrons to the interaction of various particles would suddenly be extremely different. But these bubbles, just like in water, don't just form by itself. This actually reminds me of various experiments I've seen a long time ago of people putting pure distilled water in a microwave and then trying to bring it to boiling and failing in the process. And that's because in order for water to boil, it actually needs to have some imperfections inside of it. And so without these imperfections, the water actually gets hotter and hotter and hotter and at some point it reaches what's known as supercritical water state. And scarily enough, if anything touches the supercritical water at any point, it all kind of explodes, evaporating almost instantly. Here's actually a really cool demonstration of this that you can also find in the description. This is from a channel Sgate1212. And here we have this supercritical water that's possibly over 100 degrees Celsius in temperature, and as soon as it encounters impurities, it essentially evaporates, changing its phase in a very explosive way. And likewise, Something very similar has been proposed about the Higgs field as well. Here, a certain kind of imperfection or impurity could potentially trigger a sudden phase change. In other words, even though the Higgs field might resemble some kind of a pure distilled water now, if there is an impurity or some kind of an imperfection in it, it might suddenly reach the point where it starts to change its phase because there is a lower energy state that's much more beneficial to the field. But in order to form these bubbles, it does need to have a very good reason. So essentially it needs to have something with extremely specific conditions. And specifically something that's extremely high in energy, so for example hot plasma, but also something that possesses a lot of gravity. And though things like neutron stars could potentially contain a lot of energy, and things like black holes contain a lot of gravity, neither one of these objects might be enough to initiate these bubbles. But interestingly, there might be a type of a black hole that could potentially contain both properties and thus be perfect to initiate these bubbles. And here we're talking about black holes that are so low in mass that according to Stephen Hawking, they're now evaporating so quickly that they're actually producing a tremendous amount of energy in a tiny, tiny point of space. And the only way for these black holes to exist is to be created right after the Big Bang. So here we're talking about primordial black holes. Black holes whose mass is possibly similar to a mass of an asteroid or even less. And black holes whose sizes would be smaller than even a subatomic particle. And turns out these types of black holes do actually contain perfect conditions to form these Higgs field bubbles. Which is what this paper that was recently released is all about. Here they mathematically prove that primordial black holes, if they exist, would most likely cause Higgs fields to basically bubble up and transition to a new phase changing the universe all at once. Here we're actually talking about black holes with very low masses, even in grams, essentially comparable to a grain of sand. And according to a lot of modern theories, these black holes potentially do exist and may even explain certain mysteries about the universe, including dark matter or how certain black holes became so massive. And so unlike typical black holes, these would not form from star collapse and would have been produced right after the Big Bang. But apparently, these black holes would have a very dramatic effect on the Higgs field itself. In the presence of this field, they would act like impurities because of the gravity and very high energy in a really tiny point, with each individual black hole potentially serving as a kind of a source for the phase shift of the field across the entire universe. And so basically they would make the field sizzle, changing the entire universe, dramatically shifting all of the fundamental laws and fundamental forces which as far as we know has not happened anywhere yet. And as a result of this, or basically since we don't see anything like this around us or in a distant universe, here the researchers actually explain this as maybe these primordial black holes just don't exist. And maybe any theory and any proposition involving these black holes is also incorrect. 
with the alternative explanation being that if one day we actually do find these black holes and we see them physically, maybe it's actually the Higgs boson and the Higgs field that we're not entirely correct about, and maybe the field itself is very stable and will never change. And so all in all this is actually a somewhat intriguing theoretical paper that makes some somewhat intriguing and somewhat exciting propositions, but also obviously raises a few questions. So for example, how likely is it that all of this led to the inflation early on? And how likely is it that once black holes do start evaporating in approximately 10 to the power of 67 years from today, at least that's based on modern assumptions, will all of this lead to another phase transition and a completely new universe? And so obviously none of these questions we can answer just yet, but that's basically why I find theoretical physics so much fun. So many crazy propositions, so many crazy explanations, but so far, nothing concrete just yet. Which means that we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries, possible evidence, or possibly more explanations. For now though, it does look like at some point, the universe will actually go through a phase shift, thus making everything we know and everything we care about kind of non-existent. But that something might not happen for a while, unless, I guess, we lose the quantum lottery. And basically unless the Higgs field decides to change right now. Or now. Or maybe now. Okay, hasn't happened yet. But I guess you never know. And so until that happens, or until we find something else, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.